Okay, we have a tough problem here. We have the xy coordinate plane. We have line k. We know it does not pass through the origin. So maybe we'll write a little reminder here is origin. It does not pass through the origin. We want to know which of the three statements provides sufficient information to determine whether the slope of k is negative. So let's talk about that for a second. What does it mean for a line to have a slope that is negative? It means that from left to right, if you were to put a ball right here, it would go down. So that's a negative slope. That could be line k. This could be line k, because if there were a little ball here, it would roll down left to right. And so what we notice is that whenever you have a negative slope going down, and you have y minus sub 2 minus y subscript 1, or x subscript 2 minus x subscript 1, this is always going to be negative. So that's another way of conceptualizing what does it mean to have a negative line. So whatever two coordinates are for the y, subtracted or divided rather by the two coordinates for x, you will always get a negative. Now, let's go to these actual answer choices here. See, is that enough to tell us whether or not this line is negative? Okay. The x-intercept of line k is twice the y-intercept of line k. So now, the good thing is, let's actually use these lines I've drawn here. That would be the x-intercept. Why? Because it crosses through the x-axis right there. This, because it crosses through the y-axis, would be the y-intercept. So this is saying the x-intercept is twice the y-intercept. So this could be, let's just say, 2, 0, and this could be 0, 1. And so as a result, you can see that, OK, sure. That's 2 is twice 1. Not a problem. Now, in both cases, what do we know? Well, 2 over 1, both of these have to be positive. If this were negative 2, that is x-intercept oops, was negative 2, keeping the y-intercept as 1, you could see that, hey, wait a second. Two, negative 2 is not twice 1. It's negative 2 times 1. So therefore, when we have this setup here of twice 1, we can see that this line here has to be negative because as soon as we reverse that, it goes up and it's positive. Another way of testing that using this is to say, well, this is the y because it's the y coordinate here. 1 minus 0 is 1. This is the x, and we're going to get 0 minus 2, and we're going to get negative 1 half. So you can see whenever we have this format in A where x is twice y, we're always going to get a negative slope. So you can see that visually, or you can represent it using the slope formula. So A is sufficient. Now with B, the product of the x-intercept and the y-intercept of line k is positive. Well, here it goes, same thing again. 1 times 2, that's positive. Even if we're crossing through the nether regions down here, again, negative slope, here the x-intercept is clearly a negative. Let's just call it negative 4, 0. And down here, the y-intercept is clearly negative. We'll just call it 0, negative 4. You can see that dividing those two, or rather multiplying those two, the product will give you a positive number, in this case, 16. Or up here, 1 times 2 will also give you a positive. But what happens if we suddenly have this old line here going up? Well, we have one number here, which is negative. In this case, I believe we'd call this line right here negative 2. And this is going to be positive. Or we can draw the line. Let's clean it up just a little, and draw it down here. Here we have 0, negative 6, and here let's just call this 6, 0. You can see whenever you multiply x times y, you're always going to get negative. Therefore, if a line is going down and is negative, x-intercept times y-intercept will always be positive. So now we have a and b. Finally, we have c. And c says that line k passes through the points a and b and r and s. And that when you say a minus r, or when you have a minus r times b minus s, that's going to be less than 0. And this is interesting because going back to here, when you have these two minus each other, notice here a minus r, it's the x's minus one another, and when we have b minus s, it's the y's next to each other, whether you're multiplying or dividing them, when the slope is negative, there's always going to be a negative number here. And as you can see, one of these has to be negative for this to be less than 0, and the other one has to be positive. And as a result, we can say in this setup, the slope must therefore always be negative. So C is sufficient as well. And the answer to this very tough problem are A, B, and C.